obsessed with something. The man who led me to the Lord, Ron Montgomery, Lord bless him, God bless his soul, amazing man of God. He told me right after leading me to the Lord, I mean within 24 hours, he said, your relationship is with Jesus. You will encounter problems in church. Mm. We all do. Mm. Every time we are in community with anyone, mm -hmm. we will encounter problems. Mm -hmm. Sometimes someone will be a jerk to you. Sometimes you'll be the asshole. Mm -hmm. Everything is for a season. Mm -hmm. If that season is 40 years or if mm -hmm. that season is two months, that's God's timing. But your relationship is with Jesus, period. Let the other stuff ebb and flow. Yeah. Just realize that there's going to be good times. There's going to be bad times. Mm -hmm. But hold on to that one thing. And I have never forgotten that. And that uh -huh. has saved me a world of heartache. That's now true. when now when something happens, usually not that big of a deal. There's a couple couple things that I've bumped into here and there where it kind of stayed with me a little longer than I would have liked it to. But mm -hmm. for the most part, I just roll with it. Because you were told we're, we're flawed and we're all trying to figure it out. Yeah. And we see through a glass darkly, yeah. right? Like right. it's like God right. knows that we're yeah. flawed, you know? Yeah. I fret way more over the times that I've hurt people, uh, which I've done, obviously. Mm -hmm. I, I'm human. And I'm not, I'm not even excusing myself. And I've seen grace brought back to me by people who didn't owe it to me at all. Mm -hmm. I saw a lady with Martindale's and I knew I knew her and I knew I'd shared a moment with Well, her. I used to hang out at the barn a lot, so I, I did know her. Okay, so but, yeah. uh, but we couldn't figure out. She goes, so like, who are you? And you know, we tried to do all that connections. And then I went, wait, did you go through Alpha at Terry Hewson's house? Because before I started working Oh, Terry did it too? Okay. Yeah. I or just, no, at her house. Yeah, I, I taught Alpha at her house. Okay, and all Steve right. Trueblood was there. Yeah, I remember one of the right. first times uh, Candy's husband uh, was there. I said, were you? And she, goes, and she started to cry. And I said, we had a moment or two, didn't we? And she said, now that's crazy. I had a, and by the way, I'm going to be chopping this up yeah, into yeah, a few yeah. different podcasts. Yeah. Because the, the, the topic's moving, and that's fine. Yeah. I'll go with it. I was at Liberty. And which is now a, a recovery center for women. It's a safe mm -hmm. house, basically, for women who are addicts, but to bring them out of their mm -hmm. uh, environment, recovering mm -hmm. addicts, mm -hmm. to bring them out of their environment so they have a better chance of recovery. Uh, wonderful ministry, really amazing. But I was there when it was a biker ministry, and it was it was the, the church that was all edgy and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And I was the worship pastor that mm -hmm. they were saying, turn it up, turn it up. I've like, never been in a church where they said That's awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trish, the pastor. Mm -hmm. Ask me, you can sing anything you want. Would you think, would you maybe sing this? Do you remember it? Do you know it? And these are songs I wrote while I was there for them. Mm -hmm. One of the songs that she asked me to sing, the name of their, their place, Liberty, is, is actually the, the name of the shelter is Ruth's House. She said, you know, there was this song that you used to sing with a quote from the book of Ruth. I said, yeah, yeah, I, I know. She said, do you know it? And I said, if I didn't know it, Kathy Price would never let me <laughs> in any building with any yeah. guitar ever again. Yeah, I think I asked you to play it last year you, at you my did, house. You, you asked me to play it last week when yes, I ministered but here. but when I saw you last year, yeah. you were at my house, and you said, I yeah. haven't played it. And, I, said, and I, I was in such a bad place when I was there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just was. I wasn't. But you did play it then. Yeah. I was going to say, I did even play a year ago. I did yeah, play it, yeah. yeah. I, I am, as a, as a worship pastor and as a musician who's played bar bands, I will do the monkey dance if somebody, you know, it, you know, dance and I will do it. That but. song is different. Honestly, I'm pretty turned off by most worship music. I know yeah. it's not a good thing to say. Nothing yeah. really feels real to me. Even yeah. this, and then the newer stuff in the last few years that are trying to feel uber real feels uber fake because you're trying to be uber real. Yeah. It's like, ah. Yeah. And it's like very few things, but that song, especially, you know, it starts out the next move must be from you. It really is a, a great picture of God moving towards us. Yeah. I remember back in the karaoke at church days, the tapes, you know, we all oh, yeah, 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 right. And really they called karaoke. it a special. They didn't right. call it karaoke. Karaoke yeah. started in church, I yeah, would argue. Did. Okay, yeah, especially yeah. in the charismatics. And um, there was a song called When God Ran by Benny Hester. And I remember just thinking about it, I get goosebumps, and, and then he ran to me, took me in his arms. Oh, I know that song. Okay, yeah, yeah. Said, my son's coming yeah. home again. But it's like, looked in my face, pushed my tears in his eyes, and with forgiveness in his voice, said, my son, don't you know that I love you? Yeah. And I realized the biggest, if worship was that pure, like I see that song, To See You, is 
That's all you would need to draw. Um, this morning I gave a verse to my friend that came to me. I don't even know if he's a believer, but it was, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I've drawn you with my loving kindness. Yeah. And the revelation of the love of God towards humanity, when someone gets it, things do melt away. But as the church of Jesus Christ is so far removed from the love of Christ, that I believe, and John Glenn used to say this, if Jesus came back today, he's coming back in the same religious environment that there was the first time. Yeah. They would crucify him today like they did then. And he would choose to be with the junkies, horrors, and thieves because they could receive and see his message. And the church saw him as a threat. I think that's becoming more and more and more and more true. And only love changes. And there's been times I've had to love people and leave out the Jesus words because it would have gave a halo effect on what I'm saying and they would not have received it. If you look at the songs that I wrote in the last 10 years, 15 years even, starting when I was pastor at, at Aldea and uh, worship pastor at Aldea in Tucson, I started leaving the word God and the word Jesus and you said spirit. out of church. And I started saying spirit mm -hmm. and I started saying simply you. Mm -hmm. And I did it on purpose mm -hmm. because if you hear Jesus, 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 then mm -hmm. does, does Jesus have meaning after the hundredth time you've heard it? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Maybe right. I'm an aberration. Maybe I'm a bad person, but I can't hear the same words over and over and over again mm -hmm. and still ascribe meaning to them. Just well, and I imagine you probably would come into some criticism for that through the years. I, I have. Yeah, I've, I I've have. heard criticism like that. And I, I used to think, I don't think God is so hung up on his name. Yeah. You know, um, he reaches you where you're at. He relates yeah. to what you understand. And, and, yeah. yeah. And I, I remember talking to John Glenn one time about Alpha was being accused of being a new age thing, that it wasn't Jesus -y enough. There was yeah. no sinner's prayer in it. And he said, well, the sinner's prayer is not in the Bible. So you've made a religion out of this prayer. That isn't there. And that isn't there. Right. And I refuse. He brought up all these kind of radical things, but he was accused all the time. It was just a new age. Yeah. And he said, actually, that's a compliment because the gospel of Jesus Christ is far closer to the new age theology of the day, now this was 20 years ago, he says, right. than it is to the religious establishment. I would have to agree. Yeah. And I remember him talking once, or maybe it was just revelation I got, but it's like, spirit of truth bears witness to truth. So when I hear something and it's true, my spirit, the spirit of truth lives inside of me and it gives this great thumbs up. And I have heard that from Ram Das. Yeah. I have heard that get that thumbs up. I've gotten that thumbs up in the most, at a meal show, you know, yeah, when they're covering wish you were there and wish you were here. Right. And it's yeah. like, wow, I've, I've sensed that in the most unlikely places. And then I haven't got that thumbs up when somebody's preaching out of, no, we're in turn to the, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's for, for crazy. For years I couldn't go to church. Yeah. After having been a pastor. For yeah. years I couldn't go to I'm, church. I'm still it there. hurt. Yeah. It hurt. It just hurt inside. Yeah. And for a long time, worship in a corporate setting, mm -hmm. which used to be everything I lived for, mm -hmm. hurt so badly mm -hmm. for me. I couldn't do it. I would go to these big conferences that at one time had been just the high point of my week or whatever. And I would walk out feeling cold and dead inside before the speaker was done. Mm -hmm. Nobody else's problem. My problem. But I would argue. But God loved me through it and God, God loved me out of it. Yes, God loved you through it. But he, I would argue that the spirit of truth bears witness to truth. And, yeah. and if you weren't receiving something that was real, there might not have been there. I, you know, I flash yeah. back to my days in Tulsa when I was at the Maybe Center, 25,000 people. Papa Hagen said, do you smell the roses? And everybody, Every, everybody, smelled everybody roses. was smelling roses. And yeah. I fled out of the building into the foyer weeping because I didn't smell roses. And you can't tell me that Kathy Joe is right and 24,999 <laughs> are wrong. I mean, the number game, them people are all smelling freaking roses and I'm not. So who's the failure here? It's me. I'm the one who doesn't hear. Well, now I realize nobody smelled fucking roses. Pardon my French. Yeah. Yeah. It was a mind game to control and manipulate. And I know that seems harsh, but I'm sorry. So much of religion has been that to control the masses. Yeah. And it's like, especially in the signs and wonders movement, you know, and there's so many things I've seen that I spent bested so many hours seeking. God, please let me get stuck to the floor and laugh for hours. Why, for God's sakes? Yeah. How does that add to my 
But you see, I've experienced that. I have too. And it was absolutely 100% real. I, I've had so many conversations with mm -hmm. people who come out of the charismatic movement. Mm -hmm. And I say come out like it's a good thing. I just mean they're not there anymore. Right. Whether it's good or bad, it doesn't matter. I also think that sometimes you just spend so much time doing all that stuff that you're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. uh, which was certainly the case with me at one point. I've experienced those things. Mm -hmm. and I And I don't turn my back on them. They were real. But I've had conversations with so many people where they say, you know what? It was probably just my mind. Well, why? Because you forgot what it felt like? Mm -hmm. Because you, if I lived it and I experienced it, then mm -hmm. I either have to figure out that I was insane mm -hmm. or that maybe I'm just in a different spot now. I think you're right. Because I do remember the one time I did get stuck and laughed my ass off. I was free from a, a resentment I'd had towards a former pastor that had left me and my family homeless by closing the church down in a day, yeah. you know, and it was really struggling to forgive that. And I was able, I got off that floor to be able to forgive. Yeah. I get that. I guess it's just the seeking after the signs and wonders. Sure. That, yeah, and, and that, you know, that's yeah. warned about in scripture, yeah, you know, right. and no, we weren't seeking you. after love necessarily. They use those words, but the love meant, are you open? You know, I remember being two rows back from Rodney Howard Brown. He started in my town in Stewart, destroyed three churches before he got famous. He was the laughing revival guy from now, wasn't, South wasn't Africa. He the, wasn't he the guy who basically built Brown, Brownsville around? Um, or am I, am I incorrect? I think so. I mean, I was the certainly... Toronto Airport Revival. And, well, I, yeah, and I hung out there, actually, yeah. every time I could get there. Yeah. And, well, Rodney, but I've never, I was never at that, Brownsville and all that. I think it so. might, he might have been connected, but he ended up being huge. We had bodyguards, oh, and then yeah. he would walk in the room. But when I found him, he was at a tent in our little town of Stewart, Florida. He came right from South Africa. And it destroyed the church we were in because the, you know, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I, I used to be in a church for years that I, I dearly loved that split over Smithton. Yeah. Smithton, which became World Revival Church yeah. in uh, Lee Summit, uh, Missouri. But but that was a laughter. Yeah. Thing. So the laughter split this church because this really sweet older couple went to the tent at night and then would come on Sunday morning and just laugh the whole service. Right. And the young pastor would try to be like, Okay, the combination. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then it didn't work. So anyway, but what I noticed is, so I was in, in a service with Rodney Hart Brown, and I was not in the front row, I was in the second row. And he's walking right by me. I don't know, but there probably used to be a person between him. And I didn't have a snotty look on my face, I promise. I was just like this. I had my arms kind of like holding myself like, huh. Yeah. Right? Just a pondering look. And he said in his South African accent, I know there's people tonight here who think that there's people in the flesh. And you know what? There is people. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And he said, you know who those people are? They're the ones that are going like this. And he stopped dead right in front of me and crossed his arms just like I had my arms crossed. And I didn't have an ugly look on my face. Yeah. I didn't. I was just, yeah. my body language was like, huh, let me see. Yeah. Right? And I don't care. Which just tells me that his pride was wounded and he was laughing out. He felt checked. By me, but, sure. but he felt like you know, ooh, she doesn't automatically ascertain that I am of God and spiritually anointed. From, right, you know, right. you know, it just all spiraled from there. But the things I was a part of, and I've seen the person karate chopped in the spirit and blown on, and okay, it's kind of fun to talk about. I cannot get a lie; some of them nights were fun. But all the Christianese language that that you and I could share. Oh, did we ever drunk? And did this happen? Yeah. People around us would be like, "Well, what did you drink?" Oh, no, you don't get it. We didn't drink. Yeah. That, that's why I wrote right. my book the way I did. Yeah. And and I think that's a lot of the reason why the book isn't received mm. because I didn't use Christianese. Right. Because I wanted to describe things that were that I believe were spiritual, that mm -hmm. I believe were real. I wanted to express that. Yeah. Not. Gee, I flow with the spirit of the big boys and the big dogs and all the all the cool kids and I know all that and I've been there. That's not what I was trying to put across. I was trying to put across that, hey, I experience these things. I know them to be true for me. So maybe if something weird happens to you, mm -hmm. it, you can you can see that as part of your spiritual life and your spiritual mm -hmm. growth mm -hmm. rather than go, oh, I must be a freak or oh, I must be a super saint. On right. the other end of it. Right, yeah, because it yeah. does kind of leave you in a quandary. Yeah. I do remember talking to John Glenn about these things sometime, and he said, Kathy, my question about that, now he was Baptist more in his foundation, mm -hmm. so my question about that is, if God is going to stick you to the floor or force you to belly laugh for four hours, wouldn't he make you be nice to your wife? Sure. Or yeah. read the scriptures. Wouldn't there be fruit? Or, or like, yeah, or like, wouldn't he, wouldn't there are other things that could be more useful that he could force you to do? Because mm -hmm. he said, in, in my 
experience is there's been a free will for me to follow God or not. You know, right. that's fine. It is what it is. I kind of enjoy the colorful past of my uh, charismatic world. It's yeah. it's fun. I have some fond memories. There were times when it was just a party and it was great. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm not sure what it added to my life. But, it, I, you know, when you look back on your history, like you said, what a long, strange trip it's been. Yeah. Right. I don't think any of us get to the end of our life and get to look back and go, that was good. That was bad. Let's throw that out. Let's keep that... It was all our life. Sure. Well, isn't that what it means to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? To make a decision, a value-based decision on mm -hmm. something without knowing all the facts. And since we're not God, we don't know all the facts. And in my variation of the red door, mm -hmm. that was a central tenet that I taught everyone there. Mm -hmm. I'm like, look, the original sin wasn't disobeying God by eating fruit. Mm -hmm. The original sin was deciding that I understand enough that I am going to make a decision about good and evil, mm -hmm. what is good and what is evil, mm -hmm. but I don't know all the facts. Well, How am I going to make a decision if I don't know all the facts and only God knows the facts? Beautiful. Um, that's, 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 my, that's my take on atheism. Okay, yeah. in order to be an atheist, mm -hmm. you have to know there is no God. Atheism mm -hmm. isn't about... And questioning, that's agnostic. Mm -hmm. if, if you're an atheist, a, a true atheist, and I'm, you know, if, if someone is, they're it, they are, uh, mm -hmm. whatever. But if you're a true atheist, then you have to know that there is no God. And in order to know there is no God, you have to be outside of time. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. to be all knowing mm -hmm. in order to know every little aspect, to know if, you know, because maybe, maybe God manifests in a way that you just don't see or understand mm -hmm. not that you're stupid you just don't know everything and none of us do exactly. so and aren't those the attributes of god mm -hmm. to be outside of time to be all-knowing to be all-powerful mm -hmm. so to me when when someone tells me with a straight face that they are an atheist okay i can believe them i can believe that that's where they're at i can and i and I'm, i don't mean that in a patronizing way i don't mean like oh no, yes dear no. of course yeah, yeah. okay fine that's what you believe but in order to to, to come to that conclusion, you have to actually ascribe to yourself mm -hmm. the attributes of God or what we would consider God. And I have, and I'm going to throw it in here. My superpower is to say, I don't know, as a pastor, mm -hmm. as someone in ministry, my superpower is to go, I just don't know. I don't have all the answers. I don't know. It's a great I, place to be. I'll, I'll right. look, maybe, or maybe I won't, because I don't care. Plus, the older, week, I, the older I get, I realize the less I know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, um, you know, and again, John, I, I haven't said John Glenn for so long, for so many times, but he used to say the sin in the garden was God never intended for us to relate to him or to each other through the knowledge of good and evil. That was never supposed to be something we did. So, oh, that person's good, this person's bad, put in this category, that category. Right. That was the damage that we did, is we began to, oh, either God's this, or he's that, people are this or this, or either I'm good or I'm evil. That thing has destroyed us, and it's destroyed That's our relationships, brilliant. right? Yeah. And we were never intended to eat from that tree. We were instead intended to walk with God in the cool of the day. Right. And hear from him where then Adam could go, hey, God, what do you think about that? Yeah, you know what? No, let's go. Okay, good. So he said, your job as a believer is not to relate to God with a list of rules. Right. Throw out your moral code because actually it appeals to your flesh. Your flesh likes to be religious because most of us, if we were given, what do you want, Mark? A list of 10 things that you can cross off that will guarantee make you right with God or... There are no rules, Mark. You just follow the spirit tomorrow and today mm -hmm. and the next day. What do you want? Uh, give me that damn list. Yeah, and you can't control anybody else mm -hmm. if you don't have the list. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And and what does Jesus say before he ascends to heaven? He said, I'm going to send somebody who is going to help you through. Mm -hmm. Wait here. That was his only instruction. His only instruction was, wait here, wait here. Yes. And on the day of Pentecost, they got yeah. their guide. You know, I, I keep coming back to this one dumb song that I wrote on the floor of my studio in tears in Broadhead, Wisconsin, years ago to see you. And it says, may your people be my people. You are my God. I've just got to follow you. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Mark in his 30s was probably a little bit smarter than Mark in his 50s mm -hmm. sometimes. Because 
that is what it's about. It's about following, following yeah. and not following when it's convenient, not following mm-hmm. when I want to. So much of life can look ridiculous mm-hmm. by just following. Yeah. And sometimes getting on the religious treadmill hinders you from following. Oh, very much. So I feel like I've, my ministry has expanded since I got out of that thing of what I should be doing. The next move must be from you. God, give me the strength to wait here all day if that's what I have to do. To see you. May the next voice you hear be mine. I'm crying out. I hope you don't mind. I've just got to talk to you. To see you. Whisper to me. Fall down on me. I'm waiting to see your face. Holy fire, come consume me. Come and meet me in this place. Where you go, I will go. May your people be my people. You are my God, I just gotta talk to you. To see you. Whisper to me. Fall down on me I'm waiting to see your face Holy fire Come consume me Come and meet me in this place I love you, I need you And I get on my knees and worship you I love you, I need you And I get on my knees and worship you I love you I need you and I get on my knees and worship you I love you I need you and I get on my knees and worship you whisper to me Fall down on me I'm waiting to see your face Holy fire Come consume me Come and meet me in 